Welcome again. Today we discuss the meaning of the term sustainability, a word that's widely used by politicians, CEOs, and of course, you students. To better understand this term, let's have a look at a model. This particular model shows a system made up of a range of producers and a few tiny primary consumers like Daphnia. There are also a few snails and the shrimp are able to feed both on Daphnia and on the plants. This system is open meaning that there is no lid placed on the container and gases can be exchanged from the outside and from time to time organic material can be introduced into the system. But at some points in time a lid can be placed over this system as shown in the diagram and when this happens the system is self-sustaining in all senses receiving only one single input of light from the outside and exchanging some heat with the outside. But, but gases are recycled within the system and nutrients are recycled within the system. This is what is meant by establishing sustainability in a closed system mesocosm. What is it that makes a system like this able to survive indefinitely or to be sustainable? And what if we were to place a cover over the aquarium and to move it from being an open system to a closed system? When we can set up a closed system that's able to continue to survive over an indefinite period of time, then we have established sustainability. But what considerations do we need to make to ensure that our system is sustainable? We must ensure that there is a supply of energy, for in keeping with the first law of thermodynamics, there is no way that energy can be created from within the system, or that any of the energy that enters the system from the outside can be destroyed. So a supply of light energy for the autotrophic organisms or the producers is absolutely essential. These autotrophic organisms produce nutrients and these nutrients and a continuous supply of these nutrients is an absolute requirement. So when plants take up nutrients from the soil or carbon dioxide from the air in photosynthesis, these nutrients need to be recycled. And if they're not recycled in a closed system, then the system would fall apart. So therefore, it is essential that there's something to break down or decompose the waste when leaves fall off or when plants die. And this continuous recycling of matter is essential if the system is to remain sustainable. So a continuous supply of energy from the outside is required and an efficient recycling of matter is required. Two key processes help us to understand the recycling that must happen in a self-sustaining mesocosm or a sustainable closed system. Photosynthesis, which is carried out by the green plants, the producers, also known as the autotrophs, plants themselves carry out respiration, so they too need a supply of oxygen as they give out carbon dioxide. So from these two processes, photosynthesis and respiration, there is some recycling of oxygen and carbon dioxide happening. But what about the recycling of the organic material, the nitrates and the phosphates and the other nutrients 
there needs to be other cycles happening within our closed system in order for it to sustain itself. And this key role is carried out by a host of decomposers. Whether those decomposers be detritivores, like earthworms that take in the material and digest it and process it and pass it out, or they can be bacteria and fungi, saprotrophs, which pass out digestive enzymes onto the substrate and digest the material outside of their bodies. So what then is the meaning of the term sustainability, as it might be used by politicians or environmentalists? It's quite simply being able to get your needs from the environment, pass your waste out into the environment without overwhelming the environmental system and making it fall apart. Within any closed system, only a certain population size of consumers can be supported. It is estimated that if human civilization continues to live the way it does at present, that by the 2030s, the current environmental crisis would be much more severe. For it is estimated that we currently live in planetary overshoot, meaning that the resources that we use from the environment and the burdens we put on its recycling systems require 1.5 Earths to sustain human civilization. Or put another way, we need 18 months of productivity to support the Earth for 12 months. This is described as being in planetary overshoot, and it occurs when the ecological footprint is larger than the carrying capacity. But that is the topic of another lesson.